back we got a special one today we are in the price to sell in florida in miami it's the first time we're doing this internationally you want a many but we have to start off with a banger we are here with the far brothers max <laughs> and rob farbstein you guys are awesome thank you for having me come down no, here thank you for having yeah, us on you. here we're, we're excited we have a lot of love for you, and and we're about to bring the fire. The this fire, feels, this, we're this, about this, to bring the fire here. This, this feels like a long time coming, honestly. So I'm happy yeah. to be able to make this happen. And it's our first time meeting, but I feel like you know, me and him have been voice yeah, selling yeah. forever. I, I know your voice like more than my mom's voice. So, <laughs> um, and we, we have but, so many mutual friends. I felt like we already knew each other before you even exactly. came down here. So it's you know, a small we were just as circle. excited. <laughs> and we're gonna shout them out. Shout out to all the boys out there: Ernesto, Anthony, Kane, Everybody. the rest you know of the boys. Are. We all love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Love Canada. And this wouldn't have happened without any of them. So it's true. Here we are. It's all about the power of your network, my friends. It is. It is. So we're in the beautiful Ritz Carlton. Yeah, we are. So right now we're in the Ritz Carlton of Sunny Isles Beach. It was just rated the number one new construction development in all of Miami Beach. And I we had the pleasure of of taking Matt up to a twelve million dollar spectacular custom one of one unit in the building that we're going to be launching soon, and I mean I'll let his reaction speak for it, but it is wildly impressive. The really catch of this building is that not only is it brand new, but it it is a building that's situated on a very special piece of a parcel of land right next to a state park, so the views from anywhere in the building, especially the unit that we had toured are the best of the best in Miami Beach, and I'll, I'll put that bar none against any others. Well, I, I mean, the, and you guys will see it. So I actually haven't announced field trips formally through podcasts, but what we're doing is we're going to be traveling to different um, cities internationally, literally anywhere, that's the goal, and interviewing some of the best in the business and seeing the product that they're selling. Uh, just bring a little different twist to the podcast game, give you guys some so did I just drop that dime stimulus. by accident? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> no, know no, the listeners No, no, did. no, 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 no it's, been, it's, it's been dropped. It's just I haven't really come out and really said anything about it, especially on the podcast. So sure, field sure. trips, look out for them. They're going to be global. We're going to be do, doing many with these guys too because you guys got some crazy-ass listings. Well, this is uh, a great place to start the field trips for sure. Definitely. Miami is one of one city. So. Definitely. So let's let's get into uh, you you boys, a little uh, bio as to you know, your journey because you know as realtors and how you guys started and now you're obviously – crushing it so we'd love to know how sure so i mean uh, i'm ryan farbstein it's my I'm brother max, max farbstein. farbstein i'm matt farbstein <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's now also matt farbstein <laughs> so uh yeah uh brother duo down here in miami we're absolutely kicking ass i don't know if we can you know say that on here or whatnot can. but we can, kick we, ass. Can. Yes. we can we can just fire away fire away okay <laughs> So, yeah, we're absolutely uh, uh, kicking ass down here. We had a very banner, huge year last year. We did uh, over $100 million. Our highest price sale was $35 million, followed closely by $22.5 million. Awesome. And then, you know, basically the majority of our business is between the million to $10 million price point all the way up to, like we said, $35 million. And, and some of our listings uh, pushed the threshold of $60 million. So we really focus in that ultra, not just ultra luxury, that really 1% of the 1% of, of the highest end real estate down here in, in Miami. We also have a small presence in New York, Hamptons, and New Jersey. Yeah, to touch on that a little bit more, Ryan and I were born and raised in New Jersey. Yeah. So, you know, our family, our ties, our roots are all up in the Northeast. So um, I'm licensed in New York. So we kind of do both. Florida and New York, the best of both worlds. And yeah, well, when we're dealing in this price point, our clients trust us, not just for our knowledge of the Miami network, but for our knowledge and to, to really be the representative for their entire real estate portfolios. And they, they want that conclusively across any market that they're interested in. They would like us to represent them in Aspen, in Hamptons, in New York, in New Jersey, and it's because they have such a level of trust that we'll not only be able to deliver, we'll get a great deal. Our connections, you know, stem far from just Miami, and our buying pool is and our pipeline is, is huge. Yeah. So you know, it's it's been a great way to diversify us out of from all the other agents, and I believe there's fifty thousand agents in 
Miami. So that's a, a, a little bit of a, a history. Cool day yesterday for, for Max and I. We were just awarded top 10 realtors in all of Florida. Oh, wow. After receiving the top 1% accolade of realtors in all of America. So, yeah, we're, we, we're, we're doing very well. We'll put it that way. We'll stay humble. We're doing very well, and we're very blessed. And uh, we're excited to be here today with you. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, <laughs> it, it's crazy. I love how I love how here in the States, it's so you're able to diversify so easily in all these different states. Like, there's so many different markets you can sell in, like getting a license in, in New York. Like, I, we talked earlier in, in uh, Canada, we have, you know, we have Toronto, we have Montreal, <laughs> we have Vancouver. <laughs> it's pretty much it. That's exciting, I guess. You can say no offense to all the prairies and other provinces out there. We love you. Hey. But listen, our money buys happiness. We learned about Boone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Who? What was that? What was the what was the one city that they were talking about? It started it was, with a B. It was, it was in the middle of like bumfuck. They were talking about Barry. May I, I don't remember, but uh, <laughs> I thought it was. Boone it, too. it was I a good one. We we had touched on it a little bit. I forget the yeah. uh, the city, but yeah, primarily your markets. You know, really run by a, a couple locations, destinations, and in the in the states here, it's really interesting because a lot of people are second, third homers, so they really just want the presence in all the major markets. So a, a lot of them have property in. LA, a lot of them have property in, in the city. They have property down here in Miami. And to have that one point of contact to really help uh, navigate everything around that, that, or that, that atmosphere, it is, it's kind of the value that we bring. And uh, it's something that we specialize in. And also you're getting two for the price of one with me and Ryan, you know, we both have strengths and weaknesses that kind of balance each other out. So it's the perfect combination. Yeah, no, I, definitely. I, I'm big on that, too. I think, I know, like, you guys are obviously brothers and working together. Any sort of collaboration in real estate can go a long way it's versus trying to thing. be, like, your soul, the soul guy, just trying to, like, you and know, we love fuck to everyone else. We love to collaborate, yeah, too. It's the I best mean, way. in this industry, you can't have an ego, you know, no. because we're all trying to help each other and help our clients get yeah. to that common goal and get the best deal possible. So you have to, you know, not have an ego and be willing to work with anybody that comes your way. Yeah, exactly. That's you guys could have said, like, who's, who's this random Canadian guy trying to film in my $12 million listing? Who is <laughs> that, it, you know? That was the farthest <laughs> from what we said. We, exactly. said who, we, we said, who's this legend that's coming down here for us to talk to? And we're excited to, you know, bring some fire onto the podcast, show a, show a beautiful trophy. And I know that, you know, off – off camera, we had, we had been talking. We're we're gonna try to bring a lot of heat together. We will, you know, moving forward. So Definitely. I'm not gonna touch too much on any of that. But yeah, yeah. So this building is has been very good to us. It's actually aside from being uh, some of the top brokers, if not the top brokers in in the country, we also are developers and we love to build. That's kind of how we got on the front side of the agent side of the business because we had been building actually in this building, we bought pre-construction three units for a total of 35 million. I believe don't quote me on that. I got to go back and look at the numbers, but we ended up selling out that same inventory two, three years later for record prices. We had two, three bedrooms that sold for over $2,000 a foot the previous sale in the building hadn't been anywhere close to about 1100 And after that, we then took our, our, our same momentum and we developed the penthouse of the building alongside our family. And we were able to sell that for a record uh, $35 million. We're, we are under NDA, so I, we can't go into too much detail about the transaction, but it was the most magnificent penthouse that we could have ever built. And, you know, the, the fortunate buyer that's in there now is very lucky because today we're kicking ourselves a little bit because I would probably appraise that property closer to $50 million. Interesting. Yeah, so it's... You know? It's such a sp short span of time, too. It's been killing it here. Like yeah. The market's been, like, crushing it here. The market has been on fire. It was like uh, Bitcoin when it was, you know, coming up hard, <laughs> strong, heavy, and it just was no signs of pullback. So for here, this market has really had a catalyst since, of course, COVID was, was a major one. But just, you know, people having realized the amenities that Miami has to offer the right. city, the innovation, how forward thinking they are. Actually, our political power here mm -hmm. is very much pro just Florida and life and to continue to go, you know, through the motions of making Miami one of the most competitive cities in the world. Yeah. And I would argue that today we stand in, in, in the top probably 10 cities, if not 
even shorter, maybe top five cities in the world. So for us to have positioned here and uh, to have such a strong presence was a very strategic move. And uh, we're very blessed. We love Miami. We actually, I know Max said that we grew up in New Jersey, but we also had uh, some family down here. So we spent a lot of time growing up in, in Miami. So we knew the lay of the land really well. We knew that we were going to end up here eventually. Ryan went to school in Boca at Lynn University. I went to nice. school in Tampa. So we both ended up in Florida after New Jersey. And we, like Ryan said, we've been coming here since we were kids. And we just saw so much opportunity here. Yeah. You can't come to Miami and see all these buildings that didn't exist years ago that are now just dominating the beach and all these different things going on. CEOs moving their companies down here during the pandemic. There's just so much opportunity in life down here that it just for us it's there's no place else to be it was a yeah. no-brainer where yeah. are we gonna where are we gonna park i mean the best fucking city in the world yeah. <laughs> in yeah. our opinion yeah i went to york university you guys know where that is nice. you could say no i have no fucking yeah, I, I, Pennsylvania, yeah. Right? I thought so yeah. oh exactly no no, no it's in canada right yeah, i'm just it's yeah, yeah, a yeah. guess yeah that's fine look nobody just, knows where lynn is trying to compare but i can't but i would love to get in. so let's let's talk let's talk about some highlights of uh miami what sure. what has been what have been some main factors as, uh, to its growth maybe from the market? Um, why people are so attracted to come move here? A lot of Canadians moving here. I, I think policy across the board has been the main <clears throat> driver of relocation. I mean, people are just so unhappy with the way that that not only the pandemic was dealt with, just the abuse of power, the the lack of tax advantages. I mean, there really is no incentive for people to be living in places where they're not being incentivized to live. So when you come down to Miami, you feel like, okay, what's the in incentive here? Well, you know, we have a, a massive surplus in cash flow as a, as a statewide situation. Our lead, our governor, spectacular. Our local, you know, mayors are... Shout out to Santos. Shout out to Santos, <laughs> absolutely. Even a lot of Canadians yeah. <laughs> love him too. <laughs> he is doing a fucking fantastic job, and he has been one of the main reasons that people have continuously looked at Miami and not so granularly looked at the dollar amounts of everything and said, you know what, on a macro level, this is the place where we really need to relocate and park. It's got the advantages that we want. It has all the amenities that none of the other cities or states have. We have water, we have beach access, we have city, we have financial districts, we have, you know, if you go west, we have suburbia. I mean, there's literally nothing that this state, and more specifically South Florida, lacks. So it's really hard in comparison to some of the other places, and being the big driver of why people came here is, you know, when you look at Las Vegas, well, yeah, it's, it's cool, but at the end of the day, you're on a desert. It's... Yeah. 115 degrees you go down to arizona similar situation california i mean people couldn't leave california fast enough the policy was terrible i mean you walk the streets of san francisco it is a different san francisco than you know i'm sure you and i remember yeah. when you go to chicago i mean just look at ken griffin and, and citadel they came they couldn't leave fast enough i mean it, it's it's very unsafe in some of these places and people are finding that what they are concerned about in their locations they no longer carry those concerns here in Miami. Not saying that Miami doesn't come with it, you know, some some challenges and difficulties. Of course, but, but you see that anywhere. Yeah, you know, yeah, and what makes yeah. Miami so special and, you know, feedback we've gotten from a lot of our clients that have come here from other places is Miami's adaptability. You know, well, I'm so going to use an example and just say cryptocurrency. You know, um, cryptocurrency completely, you know, boomed out and became a huge thing. And Miami was one of the first cities to say, hey, why can't somebody pay for a unit in cryptocurrency? And yeah. now you start seeing it in a bunch of these popular buildings where now they're willing to accept cryptocurrency and adapt to these changes. So through the years, things like cryptocurrency and different factors have, you know, changed the landscape of Miami and Miami's moved with that landscape, which is, you know, I think something I special. Should. Have you guys done a crypto deal? We, we have. We have. How does that work? I had, I had a feeling we were going to touch on that. How does that work? I didn't know where Max was going to go with that just yeah. now. And he yeah, kind of no, went I, into the crypto. No, it's cool. So, no, so to touch on the subject, yeah. you know, our mayor, Mayor Suarez, is awesome. I mean, he has made a very strong push to bring Miami to the forefront of this cryptocurrency and, you know, the, 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 the Web3 digital space. He's making a very strong effort to really brand Miami as the hub. So that being said... We had a very cool client, somebody that we that we love and respect dearly. You know, we can't go into too much detail. He's an extremely private person. And uh, we he gave us the opportunity to try to piece together a cryptocurrency deal. And 
we were able to. There was a developer, Alex Sapir, built a spectacular building, one of the best, in my opinion, and I'm sure Max is. Absolutely. Which building is this? Arte. Okay, cool. And it is magnificent. I mean, mm. if you're Bruce Wayne, that's where you live. That is Batman's building. Yeah. Ultra I mean, luxury it, boutique. I'm you can't cool. get in there. It's the most exclusive building. I mean, the cheapest unit in there is $20 million. Wow. I mean, it, it doesn't it, it doesn't really get any better. 16 residences, extremely boutique. Oh, and so it's, it's super tight. Super it's small. so, very, very it's intimate. so intimate. Very. It's I like that. It's really cool because, yeah. you know, you're in some of these higher volume buildings so that when you see one of these boutique buildings, the service and the amenities are just so on par. There are people waiting at every level for you, whatever you need, whatever you want. I mean, it's 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 the true definition of, of white glove service. A lot of buildings brand themselves that way, but that truly is a white glove serviced building. So headed back to the original story. He gave us the opportunity to do this deal in cryptocurrency, and we negotiated directly with the developer and, and a good friend of ours, Tara West, was you know representing the developer at the time, and we were able. It was difficult, but we were able to to, to close that transaction, and it it now is and still is the largest cryptocurrency transaction in history in the world. Wow! Recorded, yeah. Okay. It was. How did that feel? It felt. It was bittersweet. Because we had gone in knowing, so when it's something that we'll touch on more in this in this pod is when you're dealing in the in the super luxe market, the ultra ultra luxury market, these clients are wildly private. They yeah. do not want their names out there. They don't care. They don't want transactions to go out on you know the internet. And it's it's a fine line between you know us as as the buyers agents in in this situation to to not put out any press and yeah. you know not talk about it or anything like that but you can't really stop the developers from doing what they want to do and you know it is a public sale so there's only so much you can do to keep the sales out of the public spotlight so anyway it ended up getting picked up by basically every publication ever and it was uh, revolutionary for the industry and for things moving forward. And I think it changed the way and perception of developers looking at cryptocurrency as a viable fiat to close or a viable, you know, way to purchase property. And, and that, and having had done it in such a high price point, the, the people who wanted to do it in lower price points were saying, okay, then if they could do it at 22 and a half million, then we could definitely do it at five, six, 700,000 maybe 2 million. And after that sale, there had been a, a, a few after. So how do we feel about it? We were fucking thrilled. I yeah. mean, let's just, <laughs> let's just be honest. Yeah. You know, we were, we were thrilled. We had an amazing client, gave us a great opportunity. And, uh, at the time we were able to deliver tenfold for him and, and get him a almost get, do a deal that was in theory impossible to do. Yeah. So, and, uh, so I, I guess, to, um, Leitman's terms, which is Cole's notes that like you have, to, you have, the seller obviously needs to accept the full crypto. Yeah, so the right? seller so they have to be on on board for exactly. that. Exactly, correct, and w willing to accept that. Right. Yes. Um, and then how's the transaction done? Like paperwork and stuff. Like how's uh, that was, it okay, must be so, different, right? So like, look, I don't want to give out our secret sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to no, give out no, our secret no sauce. No sauces here. <laughs> it's very dry. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about it off camera, okay. but um. Yeah, there, there's a process. There's a there's something called a KYC process, which is a know your customer process, yeah. and it's a way to verify that hey, these funds weren't stolen. They weren't. They didn't come from anywhere that was unkosher. It's been you know uh, properly accumulated and, and grown, and and there's proof of where it came from. It's not just like it came out of space. From, it's to yeah. legitimize. The, it's it's basically yeah. to legitimize and and to bring credit to the buyer. Once they pass that KYC process, then things get interesting and start heating up. And then that's kind of where the secret finesse comes in. And, you know, also that knowing this process for us and having done it a few times thereafter, that, that, that significant sale, we've become the go-to cryptocurrency realtors oh, because we won't give out do that not, information. Out. No, that's our niche. Hold that down. I love yeah, that. Love because that. people are now coming to us and saying like, Hey, you know, somebody, the, this realtor is telling me that they can do it, but you know, I don't even know if they know what a wallet is or yeah. if they know yeah. what a ledger is or super you know, smart I love things. It. Yeah. So for us, we dove deep. So after that sale, we, we dove really deep into cryptocurrency more so than we had ever been because we said not only, wow, you know, this is, this is, this is, this is real. It, it, it could really happen. And, and somebody could close on property for 
$22.5 million. Yeah. So for us, after, we're like, you know what? We need to be taking this this sector of, of the finance world really seriously. We and, and we had done, we had dove in really deep, and uh, and it's been very rewarding for us. So we're, we're not only more knowledgeable in the industry and, and know more about crypto and Web3 than we had ever known, but it also has helped us to streamline transactions to, to land this plane back on the real estate side and then take that information and relate to these buyers where normally most people don't speak the same language. There's a, a language barrier between these, you know, these tech billionaires and, you know, the real estate agents because it's something that in the real estate world has never really been... Uh, Right. There's a noticeable generational yeah, gap, you know, yeah. between like the old way and that things are done and the new way. And so for us, like to be able to pioneer and, you know, yeah. bring that innovation to the forefront and yeah. see things kind of changing in the market, it's it's an incredible feeling. And it's, it's only gonna grow and expand from here. And that's why like it's Yeah, it's it's so it's so genius because I, I've done similar things with Airbnb space and right. now you know, I'm I talk to that older generation who who who's been doing the old fashioned kind of investing style and they want to learn, so they're reaching out to the younger guys who have. And I, I've niched down on that too, just like you guys. Yeah, absolutely. And I've tried to maintain, you know, it's 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 general knowledge, a lot of it. Exactly. But still, like, because I'm very active in it myself, and so are you guys in the crypto world, which is right. uh, which is, and it gives you that credibility, right? Absolutely. Definitely. So yeah, it's uh yeah, it's super smart, super smart. <laughs> I mean, there's so many different avenues and angles to take with real estate, uh, especially niching down in things. And I'm glad you touched on that because yeah. like that was when we first did money buys happiness, you did it right before and articulated yeah. such a great message. And that when they asked us the same question about the Airbnb, I said, I don't even want to talk on it. I said, Matt gave such a good <laughs> detailed description because you know, that business so in and out and it's so streamlined that now your clients have this, you know, proprietary knowledge that you have for them and, and it's passed along. And it's, it's, it's exactly parallel to, to the, to the way that we operate, you know, right. it's suggestion to, and I'm sure it's your suggestion suggestion to any realtor is to really focus on some level of a niche so that you can become great at it, build something that you can then offer to clients that nobody else can, you know? Yeah. And I think the key, cause I struggled with this too, is to like remove the fear that you are actually the expert. Absolutely. Like, yeah, right. I'm glad you said that. You know, glad, yeah. I, I was, I was always like, I was doing the game and I was, I was making my mistakes and hit, eating shit. And then just recently I'm like, I know, I know enough. I know enough where I can come <laughs> out and I can own it. You know, and I just took my, I actually do know my shit. Yeah. I, I am, I am, I am a value. All right. So I'm gonna you are out. a high value I'm gonna, male. I'm going to okay? call myself. You know your expert, shit. You know, and, and same with you guys. It's funny that. because Definitely. there's a level of humility where like you don't want to, you, you almost don't want to say that. But at the same time, you need to say that because yeah. you have to feel that fire. Yeah, so that when you go I'm, into the situation, I'm usually the one that's trying to suppress Ryan from doing that because yeah, yeah like I'm a little bit more reserved, but like, yeah, we have done some pretty incredible things, yeah. and, you know, to, to look back on it and be able to talk about it. Yeah, I I agree. Like you have, there has to be a way to, you know, people are like these guys must have been in the business for twenty years and doing oh, it. You guys have been. We are brand fresh. new. We basically yeah. have just gone into the business. This is a third year now yeah, in the business. That's awesome. in third year. It, it, it just goes to show that it doesn't take much. No, it doesn't. Especially Anything's when you possible. come at come at it with with a plan and the confidence. Exactly. Yep. When you're laser focused, laser. And you have a vision and believe in something. Like when the pandemic first hit and we jumped into the residential yeah, side of crazy, real estate. This is a crazy story. Like we. We just, we knew, we had a conversation, me and Ryan, and at the time we were transitioning um, from our previous life into this real estate life, and we said, you know what, people's priorities aren't going to be stupid things, their priorities are going to be their family safety and health right now, because it's a pandemic, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, so... You know, we jumped in at, I think, the perfect time because everybody, that's when everybody started kind of flocking down here. Yeah. It didn't really sound like the perfect time, you know, to, to touch on what Max is talking about. We had made the decision in the heart of the pandemic, in the middle of the lockdowns, me and Max looked at each other and were like, well, what are we going to do? Yeah. You know, like we, we had been, you know, pretty successful at the time and, and we were doing really well. So then we said, you know what, this is we weren't fulfilled in the way that we are now. And we said, you know, we really want to do a, a career shift and get into something that we absolutely love. And this was we loved building. We were building these. So, you know, the, the number one issue was, OK, we're developing these spectacular units. We're building them. They're magnificent. Who the fuck is going to sell them? Yeah. So then the next thing that we said was, okay, we're going to get our license and we're going to learn how to sell these. Yeah. So from the bottom up, I think our first commission was $500 yeah. in the middle of the pandemic. We took a selfie with the check too. Just yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget we it. Thought, we yeah. thought I'll never we, forget your first check. Never, never. never. Framed. I, it's, I was supposed to have mine framed. Never happened. I don't know where it is. 
Well, we're Either gonna we, find it. We're gonna yeah. find it. Yeah, we're we gonna need find to frame it. Yeah. Ours, yeah. Too. We gotta find that too. So yeah. basically, you know, it, it's many, many zeros later. Um, it, it's come full circle. But for us, it was in the middle of the pandemic, and we kind of told our family, we told everybody, and they're like, "Are you freaking crazy? You got yeah, a multi-million right? dollar business. Why the hell would you look to go start something?" In a time when it didn't seem like anybody was going to buy real estate, but you know, the but to Ryan's to Ryan's point, though, you know, it was about fulfillment for us, yeah. sure. and to yeah. be uh, more one part thing part I've learned in real estate more thing. so than seeing these beautiful properties and walking through and talking about finishes and materials and build outs, it's actually connecting with the people you're yep. working with, learning about their lives, learning their stories. It's a very emotional decision to purchase a property, as you know. Yeah. And so to be able to, you know, guide people and be there for them and to witness the fluctuations of the happiness, the the offers not getting accepted. The therapy. The, the, ther- the therapy. <laughs> therapy. It really is just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm just grateful that me and Ryan made that shift and grateful I get to work alongside my best friend and big brother. Yeah. And I've always looked up to him and now I look look up to him in a completely different light. Yeah, you know, there was a couple to... big brokers down here. Maybe you know them. You know, Orrin and and Tal Alexander. You know, they they set a, a great example for you know what a brother duo could potentially accomplish. And you know, now arguably they're the biggest in the country. So you know, for us, it was a it was a huge inspiration for us. And seeing other big brokers knowing that hey, we have hit pinnacles. We're top one percent. Everything we got all the accolades, and we're nowhere near some of these other brokers. <laughs> some of these other brokers are doing more business than we've done all year in a couple of months and we're in the top 1%. So yeah. what does that say? Exactly. There's tremendous amount of uh, potential to grow and to keep growing. So this was also an industry that well, there was really no cap for us. Yeah. It was how, how, how far can we go with this? How far can we push the limits? It and blends into our mentality. We always say to people that we're students of life because yeah. there's always something to be learned, to be understood. And that's why in this industry, we're learning every minute of every day, 10 minutes before we started the podcast, I learned something new. So yeah, like, yeah. Know, it, just, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You're always something to learn from somebody. It doesn't matter what level they're at, who they are. I always learn something. So that's but that's the mentality to come in things with instead of thinking like I know everything. Yeah. Exactly. That, that you're just copping yourself just like that. You know. You know what? You'll be humbled so quickly by oh, some of will. these people in the business <laughs> when will. they start whipping off some of the things, yep. and then you're like, "Well, I thought I knew something." And you're like, "Wow, well, I actually nope. know nothing." Yep. Like, like that story yeah. I told you yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah. well, that, yeah. that opportunity exactly. I got. Exactly. I was humbled quick. Quickly. And I was already humble. Yeah. 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 I was really. You humble. are. You are a very humble guy. Very. But I was like really humbled in that yeah. moment. I don't know if I've it's, ever it's told those, that story. It's but. those moments that, yeah. that, that change everything and, and that mean the most. So for us, you know, we love Miami. We love what we've been able to accomplish. This city has been very good to us. And probably the one thing we didn't touch on was the quality of the clients we get to work with. It's yeah, like, you I, know, I do, I do want to get into luxury. Yes. I do want to get into. So shoot. Yeah. Like, for example, like, again, a lot of, a lot of agents. Yeah. People. And it comes down to that confidence thing. It's like, I'll never be able to be a luxury agent because. I'm just not capable, yeah. which is you versus you, right? Right. Yeah, that, that, that's a you versus you problem. Yeah. Why aren't you capable? Exactly. So you have yeah. three, two, two, two guys uh, killing it three years in the business, selling insane units, which you guys will see on the field trip. How, how do you break into like the luxury market? How do you start networking in this, in that demographic? Sure. So it was, you know, before we got on, before we came, you know, agents, we had already been networking, you know, that was something that's been instilled with us since we were kids. You know, yeah. we, we grew up around just meeting people, baseball teams, traveling, um, summer camps, uh, tours. I mean, literally everything that you could do to go and, and meet people. And, and years later, funny enough, they transpire. You know, in college, I wasn't really so concerned with getting great grades. I was shaking the hands of all the most important people that, you know, I built relationships and friendships with that still teach me things today that we've done deals with still to this day. And it's those, it's those relationships that mean everything. So, you know, going back to the old saying, tired saying of your networks, your net worth, that is the absolute key. I mean, if and leveraging, being able to take those, those people and being able to leverage and, you know, finding those niches within them to then find them. Once you get those couple listings, and you get that opportunity. One, you have to be ready for the opportunity. No secret there. You better know what the hell you're talking about. And if you don't know what you're talking about, there's so much access to information. YouTube, tutorials, classes, you know, master classes from great agents. There's no excuse not to know all the fundamentals and the basics of the business. You should go into every situation already having some level of a base. Yes, there are things that time, experience, and exposure teaches you. And Lucky enough, we were exposed to a lot, you know. Uh, yeah, we grew up very, very grateful and very fortunate. You know, our father is an entrepreneur. 
very successful, was able to do some incredible things. Our grandfather, too, he set the foundation for our family back in the day. So we got the business side from, you know, the, the, the males in the in the family, and then our on the female side, our mom is one of the coolest women we've ever met and our most mother spectacular is. mother ever. So we're very fortunate to have had both sides of that. So we got the business exposure from, you know, an alpha dad who was like, okay, you know, it's either you die or survive and figure it out. And then we had our mom that was, you know, very wholehearted and compassionate, and was there, and compassionate and believed in us. Personable and, and, you know, showed, yeah, they, we, we were very, very fortunate. We yeah. had the perfect blend of everything. So which, we're no rags to riches stories. So like having, <laughs> I think the worst part is, is when you do come from a well-off family and a connected family is not leveraging any of the history or any of the family yeah, name yeah, or right. business. You know, I get really upset when people are, you know, it's, and it's been something, a challenge of ours that we've always had to get through is, you know, oh, well, you come from a good family. I said, but if you came from a good family, there's no guarantee that you're successful. Oh, no. I said, no. it's actually a lot of, more a lot of terrible stories out there. Yeah. yeah. It's actually more pressure to withhold not only yourself as a substantial, you know, human being in the world and a success, but it's also, you have your family name to and your legacy and your also. legacy to protect exactly. and to deliver for. And then there's also a standard of living that you're not used to. So, you know, if you're used to living a certain way, it's very difficult to afford those lifestyles when then you don't have the support of family or trust or whatever the case may be. So when you really have to kind of find your out, find your own in life, you know, it, it actually, it, it forces you to ev to level up even more because you don't want to not live that life. Yeah. You know, we've all been broke. We've all been rich and we'll take rich a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's um, like you hear a lot of like the, the horror stories out there where yeah. you have your grandfather, your dad, or mom, who, who knows, whoever had, yeah, whoever had, had could, built up that yeah. family for you just for sh shit to go down the tubes because yeah. we could have been, know, you know, degenerate. The next generation that didn't, didn't care, didn't value it, didn't respect it. Like, you mm -hmm. know, I'd, I'd like to build a, some sort of a legacy. I think we all do. Yeah, that's that, that's the real goal. And I really would want to nothing change. more than for it to be continued, right? Yeah, exactly. we want to change that narrative of the second generation child is lazy and, you know, sits yeah. on, you know, the money that they get from their parents. And, you know, we think that, that's that, the worst thing that could possibly happen. You guys are grinding. Yeah, yeah. No day in and day out. You have yeah. to. Because you know what? We're so blessed to have had a little bit of a Kickstarter mm -hmm. that if we didn't take that Kickstarter and just absolutely go, you know, haywall, then shame on us. You yeah. know, if you have the slight, there are people that have done more with less. So if you have a little bit to go with, you better take that and you better run as fast as you can and, and run it up. And yeah. there's no excuse today. And it's, it's never been more open and accessible to create different generations, uh, or different, you know, iterations of cash flow. Yeah. If you want, you know, and, and success. So that's kind of, you know, what it goes back to, but to, to go back to your original question, you know, how, how are we getting these great listings and everything? It's, you know, the spider web theory is when you do really well in one, then it continues to spider web. So just taking this unit for just taking this building, for instance, you know, we had had such success they had had a sales team selling out this building and their, their blended price per foot average was $1,100 or so, give or take. You know, we came in here with our marketing strategy, our buyers and our pipeline and our, our expertise and what we were able to build knowing what the buyers wanted, we yielded a, a higher price per foot by almost $1,000. Yeah. I mean, that's just unheard of yeah. for a very, you know, for a very sp substantial unit. Well, so it's, it's crazy, yeah. Because um, yeah. again, uh, we spoke off camera before, but we've seen um, we we're talking with uh, your client as to like yeah. how far and to the extent you guys went. And tell me, he's not one of the coolest guys. He's ever. wicked. So like, we also awesome. get to work with some of the best people. Yeah. So like, we have a really close rapport. It's not just like, hey, client, you know what I mean? I'm doing the service, and then you know the 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 relationship divests after that. It's you know we talk to these guys all the time. These you know, powerful women, these powerful men, these couples, whoever it is that, that owns the property, we have a really close relationship with them. Yeah. And not just a close relationship. We're like family with yeah, them. Yeah. And know? I it's, got that vibe. You guys yeah. are like literally, literally <laughs> just like, I, and I'm the same with my clients, you know, yep. I'm all about building like a long lasting relationship beyond the transaction. You know, and you just feel like, that that's absolutely. the differentiating factor. No, it's, for it's you as well. And, and it's the most fulfilling. Yeah. I is, love, I love setting up a gift or some sort of experience or like, you know, always checking in or, or, seeing them grow and their life start 
versus just like, okay, I got, I got my commission, I'm out, you know? That's exactly, so, I couldn't have said that better. Exactly. Yeah, so it's just, it's just, and you guys make it seem like I'm some yeah. articulating genius. I suck at, at speaking, so thank <laughs> no, you. you, you really no, you don't, no, you don't. Yeah. Good message. <laughs> We're a little on. new on the public speaking <laughs> thing, so like we don't do it often. And the reason why is because a lot of these sellers are, are in such high price points that, you know, they really don't want us to, to discuss this and, and to protect the um, exclusivity and, and the, and the prestige of, of those properties. So, you know, they don't want any publicity. They don't want any, you know, tacky uh, marketing tactics and, you know, things. So it, it becomes a challenge to market and sell these properties. You know, some sellers don't care and, and it, and it, they're easier to work with, but some sellers some do. also, you know, know that the value of their properties and they want to keep them exclusive, proprietary. Yep. And uh, so Touch back on, on the original question, how do we get these listings? Of course, we go through the main motions. You know, you have to have a great listing pitch. You have to, you know, have had the opportunity to get the sit down to really sell yourself. And for me and Max, you know, we have a much different pitch than the traditional, let's just say, five other, seven other top realtors that we're competing with for all these listings because their their pitch is primarily, you know, oh, I've been the best for the last 20 years. I'm this, that, and that. And you know, they have a, a collection of, let's just say, $700 million worth of listings, where me and Max currently have about $150 million. So our relationship with our sellers are much closer, and we're, we, we have a, a much more significant day-to-day, um, what's the word for it? You know, camarader- 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 yeah. Yeah. So the, the time to focus. More. Yeah. We, I mean, yeah. they really know. Also, we don't have a team. So like yeah. we're doing this volume as me and my brother. Yeah. It's, it's not like we have a team of 30 people. And like, we're yeah. like, yeah, we're putting up crazy numbers. So when sure. we're hired to sell the properties, it's myself and Max showing the property. Yeah. We're not showing, we're not sending a junior agent to show the properties. It's, you know, it's us. It's our knowledge. It's our building knowledge, material knowledge. We know yeah. everything about these units from, not only development, but from finished product to sell. So it's uh, to go through the motions. We do have to compete with the best of the best. And, you know, sometimes we win some, sometimes we lose some, but it happens. It happens. That's the nature of the business. And it actually keeps you more competitive and competing at this level is, is exciting. It's thrilling. It's, there's always something to, uh, to talk about. There's always something to do. I mean, and there are people where you tell them, oh, Miami's the most competitive market, you know, and all of a sudden they'll tense up and freeze up. I'm like, oh, I don't know. When you tell me and Ryan that Miami's the most competitive market, we say, perfect, let's go. Strap yeah, on your shoes yeah, and let's get to work. Because if we can compete yeah. with them, then we'll go into any other market and we'll we'll absolutely steamroll these yeah, agents. Exactly. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So it, it's easier for us and it gives us a lot of leverage going into some markets that aren't like Miami, for instance, New Jersey, you know, suburban New Jersey. It's easy for us to go into you know, a, a, a city or a town that we know really well, talk to the agents and they're like, you know, wow, you know, like we've, the, the highest price property that we've ever sold was, you know, 800,000, a million bucks and, yeah, some and this and that. And yeah. then, and then you go back and you're like, wow. Okay. So then they never question your ability to close the deal, which actually streamlines the transactions, yeah. which is a C, which is a, actually a really, a really good added value to the client because now they know confidently that because of the track record and the history and the proven successes that these other agents are going to give us the respect that not only we deserve, but we don't care about that. We care about the, the respect for the client yeah. so that during the transaction and the process from contract to close feels seamless. And you know, there, there aren't too many hiccups, fires to put out and it's, it, it should be a seamless transaction from, you know, start to finish. Yeah. So then it's spider webs, you do a good job here, then of course they introduce you to their four friends who, you know, knock on wood are also really rich. So, you know, <laughs> you get a great listing. So it, it spirals. And yeah, then, domino effect. Yeah, it's a domino effect. Yeah. So it, it's no different than the other price points. Exactly. It's just you have to have the knowledge and be prepared so that when you do get the opportunity to get that listing pitch for the Capitalize $15 million dollar waterfront trophy, you know what you're talking about. You know everything you need to know about how deep the water is, how far the canal is, what it's like, you know, what are, what's this neighborhood like, you know, what's the flood zone, uh, things that are really important that, that you need to know that most people don't care about because they've never been exposed to it because how many people in the world have sold a waterfront property? Yeah. Let's just throw that out as, as an example. Yeah. So there are definitely some more intricate details that you have to know playing in this price point and it takes a 
special finesse. You For have sure. to be able to connect with the billionaires and not just look like an idiot. And yeah. you know, they're it's it's a fun situation because you're always on your toes. Yeah. And the thing is, a lot of times we don't ask who's going to come to the front door because playing in these price points, you never know who's going to walk through the front door. So having known who the buyer is going to be walking through, uh, sometimes leaving it to a little mystery actually helps the showing go better so that there's no uh, preconceived notions or anything like that. Yeah, I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't psych yourself out. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. get because we all get we all get a little nervous, you know. We all still get a little nervous yeah. in the business, no matter how confident we all seem. It's there's still your heart pumps a little bit, you know. You don't know if you're going to get that listing or not. You don't know if this is going to be the buyer or not. But yeah. it's that it's that pump that's that's thrilling that you know we kind of live for. So yeah, and for us, we love it. And you see, guys, like you know, at any <laughs> any level, there's always some sort of nervousness. So you're okay. Yeah, here, anybody that right? tries to pretend like they're not yeah. is just yeah. You're I don't trust here. them. You're talking shit to yourself. That's yeah. what you're doing. <laughs> but, boys, it's been amazing. These things fly. I know. We keep <laughs> these, them short these and things sweet. Do, these things do fly. They fly. Yeah, these things do. do fly. But if you had any piece of information, um, let's say to a newer agent out there, what would it be? Um, definitely stick. Go through your phone book. When you when become an agent, decide what niche market you want to work so if your phone book is filled with, let's just say, millionaires and billionaires, don't focus on property that's $100,000, dollars $300,000 because that's not going to resonate with your clientele, your end users, maybe the investors, yes. But if your Rolodex is filled with you know, multimillionaires, focus on the multimillion dollar price points. If your Rolodex is filled with you know, um, people that you know, are living in suburbia and it's about you know five to a million dollars then focus in the five hundred thousand to a million dollar range don't be an expert trying to sell 35 million dollar properties when you know your focus is in the hundred thousand to one million dollar range because then the information that you're that you're giving is not as strong as the information that somebody who specializes in that market not saying that these agents can't go from a focus in 500 grand to a million to you know, $50 million transactions. It's just as your pipeline grows and gets stronger, then your price points usually increase. So for us, it was a no brainer. We went through our phone book and we were like, okay, well, what's the highest price point? Well, what's, what's the highest probability that we get a sale based on our pipeline and our, our, our contact book? We looked at each other. We said, well, we have, you know, all these billionaires. We have all these millionaires in our phone that we've been connected with and know and, and trust and love. And for us, we said, you know what? We really want to hyper focus on this price point. And Smart. that's really what we did. So for, you know, the better half of the last 10 years and more specifically as agents on the last three years, we focused solely on the 1% and offering just that turnkey <clears throat> white glove service yeah. for those handful of clients. And because we don't have such a volume of a team or people, we're able to really cater to those clients 24-7 365, whatever they need, whatever we do, we always deliver for them time and time again. Yeah. And that's what we predicate ourselves on. So, I mean, first thing, patience in the business, nothing happens overnight. You know how long it takes. We know how long it takes. And uh, I said it, I said yeah. it on the uh, Money Buys Happiness podcast as well, but really emphasizing putting yourself out there, shaking people's hands who you don't necessarily know. Answer the yeah. phone. Answer, Answer the, the phone. phone. <laughs> yes. Answer the phone. People aren't just calling. I mean, there are solicitors calling, obviously, but when it comes to real estate, if somebody's calling you, they want to get a deal. Brad, right. numbers? Answer it. Yeah. So Answer yeah. It. I get excited. It's like, oh. <laughs> But yes. Us too. We get really excited. You know, some people get shy from the calls. I'm like, no, hey, Ryan speaking. What's good? Yeah. You know, what What do you have to offer? Talk to me. Give me yeah. your three second pitch before I hang up this phone. So it, it's always the agent that answers the phone first that 99% find, gets the opportunity. Find the comfort and discomfort. Yes. You know, that's that's yeah. really, you know, the one piece I could say is just find the comfort and the discomfort because that's where you really will grow, evolve and find your true self and what you have potential to do. So. Agreed. Could not agree more. Also, you could watch Price to Sell. Yeah. That well, too. That's a, lot a good of, show I heard. I, I heard it's a great show. Yeah. I heard it's just making crazy moves right now. I'm yeah. not going to tell everybody what's going to happen, but I can tell you this much. Matt is absolutely on fire, and what he's about to bring for you guys is, is, you. is ridiculous. Special. And we're honored and, and appreciative to, to have been asked to be on here. Yeah, thank you so I'm much for having me. you guys. It's been <laughs> awesome. So, too. All your new fans out there, where can they find you guys? So, uh, Ryan Farb, 
on Instagram. Max underscore Farb on Instagram. Also the Farbstein team on Instagram as well as Twitter, LinkedIn, all the major yep. profiles. We're going to throw all your links everywhere. We're all of our links it. are everywhere. If you go into Forbes, Real Deal, Architectural Digest, you know, you'll, you'll find articles written on us. And we're, we're pretty accessible um, working on... Uh, Continuing to grow and hopefully uh, run another one of these. That's yeah. it. Definitely. definitely. Florida and New York, we're here for you. So. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, to everyone out there, you guys are awesome. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Hope you guys enjoyed our Miami edition. There will be many more of these. And we will see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace.